In this video, you will learn how to sort the elements of an array with the selection sort algorithm. Sometimes you will hear it is also called the select sort or a cell sort. I will demonstrate the selection sort with this project that you can program with me. If you are new here, first go watch lesson 17.1 to 17.8 to get a better understanding of arrays. In the application we will create today, you have two list boxes. The first list box must display an array that contains the names of the eight planets in our solar system. They are ordered according to their distances from the Sun. The second list box must display the elements of the array sorted alphabetically in ascending order. Hi, it's Gerard here from Learn Delphi. I'm a trainer in programming languages and in this series, I help you to understand Delphi programming step by step and line by line. If this video is helpful to you, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And I also publish all the links I mention in this video in the description box below. In all our lessons, I start with the code immediately. I do not demonstrate how to create the graphical user interface. That is so that you only focus on the code of the lesson we are doing. If you want to follow what I'm doing, but you want to save some time, you can download the starter project to start immediately where I start with this lesson. The starter and solution project files are available for download from my Patreon page at patreon.com slash learndelphi. I also posted that link in the description. And I'm using Delphi Community Edition to demonstrate these lessons. There's also a link in the description if you want to download the free copy of Delphi. You can pause the video here and go do the downloads. I will go ahead and explain the selection sort algorithm while you wait for the downloads to finish. Let's assume our array stores the names of the first five planets in our solar system. To perform a selection sort, you must complete the sort by filling the array from index 1 with the correct values. In other words, in this example, Earth is first, so Earth must move into position 1. Your code must loop through the array and perform a series of swaps until the planet names are in alphabetical order. While cycling through the array, the algorithm must keep track of a few values. You must have a temporary variable to help you to swap the two elements of the array. In this example, you must first get Earth into position 1, where Mercury is at the moment. If you attempt to swap the two values directly, you will overwrite the first value and Mercury will be lost. And if you swap them in reverse directly, you will overwrite Earth and it will be lost. The temporary variable will prevent this from happening. If you first assign Mercury to the temp variable, it will be buffered for a while and it can be remembered later. Now you can overwrite Mercury with Earth. Mercury is not lost because you still have it in the temp variable. So now you can write it back to the position where Earth was to complete the swap. You will also need an integer variable to store the size of the array. And you will need another integer to keep track of the for loop for the first index that must be compared. The third integer must keep track of the cycles of a nested for loop for the second value that will be used in the comparison. Now let's look at the algorithm. Before we start the comparisons, we first get the length of the array and store it in an integer variable. Then we start the algorithm with an outer for loop. This loop starts at 1, and its upper limit is the size of the array minus 1, so it will cycle from index 1 to 4. The reason for not cycling through the whole array is because you must compare one name with another, and if you reached index 5, there will be nothing to compare. The first cycle of this for loop will find Mercury in index 1. Inside the for loop, we have another for loop for the second planet name that must be used in the comparison. The inner loop starts at the current index, plus 1. At the moment, the current index is 1, so it starts at 1 plus 1, in other words, index 2, so it finds Venus. The inner loop's upper limit is the size of the array, so it will loop from 2 to 5. Then an if statement inside the inner loop compares the names in index 1 and index 2. If the first value is greater than the next value in the comparison, you must perform a swap. Mercury is not greater than Venus, so no swapping is necessary. The if statement ends, and all these statements that perform the three-step swap I explained earlier will be ignored. The inner loop must continue until the end of the array, so it still has some way to go. The inner loop increments and finds the next index, so it finds Earth. Then the if statement checks if Mercury is greater than Earth. Earth must go into position 1, so you must perform a swap. The swap will be done in the three steps I demonstrated earlier. In the first step, you write Mercury to the temp variable. In the second step, you overwrite Mercury with Earth. And in step 3, you write Mercury in the temp variable back into the array where Earth was before. Now Earth moved into the first position, and the if statement ends. The inner loop must continue until the end of the array, because there may be more names that are smaller than Earth. The inner loop enters again, and finds Mars. Then the if statement checks if Earth is greater than Mars. The condition is false, so the if statement ends, and no swapping is performed. The inner loop enters again and finds the next index. In this example, it finds Jupiter. Then the if statement checks if Earth is greater than Jupiter. The condition is false, so the if statement ends, and no swapping is performed. 
Now the inner loop reached the end of the array, and Earth in position 1 is in its final position. So the compiler jumps back to the top of the outer loop. The current index increments, and it finds Venus in index 2. Then the inner loop goes to the next index, and it finds Mercury. Then the if statement checks if Venus is greater than Mercury. The condition is true, so we start the first step of the three-step swap. We first store Venus into the temp variable, then we overwrite Venus with Mercury. And then we write Venus back into the array, in the position where Mercury was. The if statement ends. We are not at the end of the array yet, so the inner loop enters again and finds Mars. The if statement checks if Mercury must go after Mars. The condition is true, and we must perform a swap again. We first write Mercury into the temp variable, then we overwrite Mercury with Mars in index 2. And then we write Mercury back into the array, in the position where Mars was. The if statement ends, but the inner loop is not at the end of the array yet. The inner loop enters again, and it moves on to the last index. It finds Jupiter. The if statement checks if Mars must go after Jupiter. The condition is true, and we start the swap again. We first store Mars into the temp variable, then we overwrite Mars with Jupiter in index 2. Then we bring Mars back into the array where Jupiter was. The if statement ends, and the inner loop also reached the end of the array. Jupiter is also now in its final position. The compiler jumps back to the top of the outer loop and increments the current index to 3, and it finds Venus. Then the inner loop starts at the next index and it finds Mercury. The if statement checks if Venus must go after Mercury. The condition is true, and we start the swap again. We store Venus into the temp variable, then we overwrite Venus with Mercury in index 3. And then we bring Venus in the temp variable back into the array where Mercury was. The if statement ends, but the inner loop did not reach the end of the array yet. The inner loop increments again, and it moves on to Mars. Then the if statement checks if Mercury must go after Mars. The condition is true, so we must swap again. We first store Mercury into the temp variable. Then we overwrite Mercury with Mars in position 3. Then we bring Mercury in the temp variable back into the array where Mars was. And then the if statement ends, and the inner loop also reached the end of the array. Now Mars is also in its final position. The compiler jumps back to the top of the outer loop and increments the current index to 4, so it finds Venus. Then the inner loop finds Mercury in the next index. The if statement checks if Venus must go after Mercury, and the condition is true, so we must swap again. We first store Venus into the temp variable. Then we overwrite Venus with Mercury in position 4. And then we write Venus in the temp variable back into the array where Mercury was. Then the if statement ends, and the inner loop also reached the end of the array. Now Mercury is also in its final position. The outer loop must cycle the number of elements in the array minus 1. So when it reached the second last element it is also done, because there is nothing more to compare. That means Venus is also in its final position. And now the array is sorted in ascending order. Now let's see how we can implement this in a project. Here I have the project open in Delphi. If your download finished, open the starter project in Delphi and follow what I am doing. Double click the button on the left side of the form. Scroll up until you can see the implementation clause. Here I already declared the string array with 8 elements. The array contains the names of the planets in our solar system. They are ordered according to their distances from our sun. We must use a selection sort to sort the names in alphabetical order. But let's first display them in their current order. Go back to the click event handler. Go above begin. Type var. Press enter and type. STR planet as string. This string variable must store the names of each individual planet as we loop through the array. Go between begin and end. Type LSD unsorted planets. Dot clear. We clear this list box. Make a new line. Type for STR planet in IRR planets. Do. Enter and type begin. Press enter, type the statement. We use a for in loop to get each individual planet name from the array. Then we read the planet's name and add it to the items of a list box. Run the program. Click the first button. The list box displays the planet names as they are stored in the array. Now let's program a selection sort. Close your form. Click the Design tab, double click the Sort button, go above Begin, type var, 
enter and type int current index comma int next index comma int planet count as integer. These two variables must keep track of the cycles of the two for loops that we will use in the algorithm and int planet count will store the size of the array. Press enter, type str temp, comma str planet name as string. strtemp is the temporary variable that must help us with the swapping of the two values. And str planet name must store each individual planet name as we loop through the array, like we did here in the other button. Go between begin and end. Type bt sorted planets dot enabled colon equals false. We disable this button. Enter and type lst sorted planets dot clear. Now we clear this list box. Enter again and type this statement. Here we use the length function to get the number of elements in the array and we assign it to int planet count. Make a new line. Type 4 int current index colon equals 1 2 int planet count minus 1 do. Press enter and type begin. Enter again. This is the outer loop that will find the first planet name that we want to use in the comparison. It starts at 1 and it cycles until the second last element of the array. We find the second last element by subtracting 1 from the element count of the array. There must always be another element to compare after the current index and that's the reason we only go up to the second last element with this loop. Type 4 int next index colon equals int current index plus 1, 2, int planet count, do. Enter and type begin, enter again. This is the inner loop that will find the second planet name that we want to use in the comparison. It starts one index after the current index found by the outer loop and it cycles until the last element of the array. Type this if statement between begin and end. Press enter and type begin. Press enter again. This if statement checks if the name in the current index of the array found by the outer loop is greater than or after the next index of the array. Type this comment. Press enter. Now type this statement. Here we assign the name of the current index to the temp variable. This is the first step of the swap. Enter and type this statement. Now we assign the second value in the comparison to the current index of the array. This will overwrite the name in the first index with the second name we use in the comparison. This is the second step of the swap. Press enter and type this statement. Now we assign the name in the temp variable to the current index of the array. This is the third step. This brings the name in the temp variable back into the array and puts it where the previous name was. And that's how you program the selection sort algorithm to sort the elements of an array. If you use Delphi Community Edition, these lines help you to see what all these end statements are ending. But if your IDE doesn't align it like this, you can write the following comments after each end statement. This one ends the if statement. And this one ends the inner for loop. And this one ends the outer for loop. Make a new line between these two end statements. Now let's display the output. Type 4 str planet name in IRR planets. Do. Enter. Type begin. Enter again. Type this statement.
This for in loop finds each individual planet name in the sorted array. And we take the name and add it to the items of the list box named LSD sorted planets. Run the program. Click the button on the left side of the form. The list box shows the planet names as they are sorted in the array. Now click the sort button. Now the array is sorted in ascending order. Close the form. Go back to the if statement and replace the greater than sign with a less than operator. Run the program again. Click the first button and click the sort button. Now the array is sorted in descending order. So you only need to change the operator to less than to throw the whole array upside down. If Pluto is still your favorite planet, you can add its name here to the array. Just remember to also make the size of the array 9 instead of 8. You can also use this with arrays that contain other data types, like numbers and dates. Just remember to also change the data type of the temp variable to match the data type of the contents of the array. If this was a lot to take in, play the video again and look carefully at my explanation at the beginning. You may need to slow down the video and look at each step in detail. Close the form and save your project. Next time we will look at another algorithm that, that identifies distinct or unique elements in an array that contains duplicates. If you enjoyed this lesson, please leave a comment. And if you learned something new, please like, subscribe and share my lessons with your friends. Thank you for watching. And a special thank you to my supporters on Patreon.com. And happy coding. See you next time.